Time keeps on leaving and we keep on moving. When do we pass on our wisdom to the youth? My veteran story, lost ours discussions, fireside chats with the bourbon or two. It's time to hear the story by military veterans. Get yourself ready. It's the Lost Arts Podcast. The Lost Arts with Andrew Cox. Hello, hello, my friends, and welcome back to the Lost Art Podcast. That podcast has given a voice to our veterans. On today's episode, we're doing a fireside chat. We got our regular podcast crew here. Uh, maybe minus one or two, but we got a regular podcast crew. We're going to have a discussion. Um, I don't know. We're going to call it Aftermath. We'll just say uh, say that. Um, but uh, if you would like to be a uh, guest on the podcast at some point in time, you can send me an email at the lost art with Andrew Cox at gmail.com. Again, that's the lost art with Andrew Cox at gmail.com. If you would like to uh, donate any money, you can become a patron. That's where it's a monthly reoccurring uh, donation, or you can do a one time donation. If you go to our website, you'll be able to see it and click on it and do whatever you want to do. But uh, anything is uh, appreciated, and it helps us through this podcast. And then uh, the podcast itself is uh, thelostart.podbean.com, thelostart.podbean.com. That's going to take you there. There's also cool merchandise. This is a newer thing right here. Yeah, stay motivated, change your socks. I got to put that in there. Anyways, you can get cups, you can get mugs, you can get shirts, you can get all kinds of crazy shenanigans stuff but with that being said uh my podcast crew how are we doing today not too bad not too bad uh just a little nine hour trip you know a little nine hour drive <laughs> yeah no big deal yeah no big deal you know we stopped at bucky's mm. Mm. Okay. i stopped i stopped at a couple of bucky's <laughs> <laughs> 13 hours there's actually there's three of them in between here and there but wow yeah uh, what about you krista how are you i'm good we're good yeah. i didn't stop at any buckies <laughs> <laughs> we're buck buckyless <laughs> i've never been to one i heard they're really cool well they got one like right there's there a wall of jerky right is that true yes I like jerky. Wall of jerky. They make their own fudge. They have brisket sandwiches and all mm -hmm. kinds of good stuff. Huh. I did have some goose jerky last weekend, though. Did you say what? Goose jerky, yes. Okay, make sure I heard that right. Yes, goose jerky. Well, My name's Hunt. Good? It's good. It's good. And some deer jerky, yeah. So, yeah. I've had deer jerky. I've had shark jerky, too. Mm hmm. Mm. I don't know. I don't know yeah. if I can handle that. <laughs> that might That's be a bit much. Part. Yeah. Could do some. Make All sense. right. This is something so, about dried out fish, huh? Yeah. I, not, a fan, <laughs> not a fan of dried out fish. I don't know why. <laughs> I like my fish done, but not that done. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. Uh, yeah. So, uh, it, it, the reason we're calling this aftermath, right? It's the aftermath because we had a retirement ceremony for uh, me, which was pretty freaking cool. Uh, if you look right there, that that cool thing is what the Marine detachment. I can't use my finger properly, but that's the, what the Marine detachment got me. It's pretty cool. Uh, so if if anybody on here from the Marine detachment is listening, thank you. I appreciate it. It's a really really cool gift. I. Uh, and I can't believe you guys spent that kind of cash on it. But if, if I owe you, then I'll pay you back. But whatever. Um, anyway, so what was it? Thursday night we got together, uh, which was technically my 25-year mark in the Marine Corps. And oh, wow. uh, a couple of us went out went out to drink that night. Uh, and one one person in particular – probably drank way too much and uh let's just say that individual had a rough morning the next morning <laughs> so 
So then, well, only one of us was drinking shots. I can tell you that. That is a true statement. <laughs> <laughs> is a true statement. <laughs> Not, Not necessarily <laughs> by choice. <laughs> What's that, Victor? That but, means not it. Not yeah. it. Okay. Not it. <laughs> no, definitely not it. I was driving, so <laughs> I was down here, so it wasn't me. <laughs> it was. It was me. It was me. Um, <laughs> so, uh, what was really cool, and I didn't even say this at my ceremony because I am a turd bucket like at school. Whenever I I did it, but uh, Via Ramon Via played on Thursday night. He did uh, Poncho Via playing or whatever, and uh, did did a fantastic job. And uh, it was a blast. It, I had a good time. But at the ceremony, I went around and I said, "Hey, if I served with you, you know, whatever, stand up." Da 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 da. Yeah, guess where I started? I started at the School of Music, which okay, you would think that makes sense. No, no, I should have started at boot camp because he was one of my drill instructors in the company. Yep. And he, he did was? serve there. Oh. Yeah. 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 Uh, Via, he was a uh, staff sergeant at the time. Uh, anyways, so Ramon, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Yeah. All that good stuff. Uh, so, yeah. So let's see. Friday, uh, we had the ceremony, uh, which I thought went swimmingly. It was a lot of fun. I, I don't know. We, we watched got- it. I watched it. We were actually eating. I don't know if we were eating late lunch or something and we watched it and ron's like red is that your he calls y'all my boyfriends he goes that's your little boyfriends <laughs> <laughs> i was like yeah we're i said we don't have anything else to do because we'd gone to the funeral uh-huh. we went to gary yeah. peterson's funeral so we were back and um it was raining all day so go ahead i'm sorry oh no that's fine no i was gonna say what did you guys think about the retirement was it uh i thought it was great i enjoyed it because it, was there someone else with you yeah there was another person retiring as well no, it was just me. No, no, just okay. me. I think it was just another guy that they were handing out. It was handing out stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah one person can. retiring is enough. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're too long. Uh, Although uh, I, when I was I at uh, when I was at Quantico, we used to do uh, joint retirements. Uh, at like at like uh, morning colors, we do a quarterly morning colors, and whoever was a part of the headquarters battalion, if you wanted to retire, that was your retirement ceremony. So every every quarter there was at least one person retiring, and we had as many as six once. Right, and they all brutal. They all... Oh yeah, wow. they, they all got like five minutes to talk. Oh wow, yeah. But the officers didn't speak for them, you know. So it wasn't like the officers, you know, giving a speech for them, and then they get mm-hmm. to talk. It was just the retirees talking. Uh, but still, you know, you put that on top of a morning colors plus thirty minutes of speeches. Oh golly. Was that uh, was that just like people that just hey just do a quick retirement ceremony for me and or yeah. like everybody got that? That was SOP. If you were retiring oh, and you okay. wanted a, you wanted a ceremony and you were in headquarters battalion, your your appointed place to do duty was morning colors. That's where you retired from. Wow, I'm, I'm, there was a rank requirement or something on that. Um, well, I mean, uh, no, I there was a I, I remember a couple of staff sergeants out there. I don't, hmm. I don't know. I don't. Yeah. I, I, well, I mean, yeah. If you retired, retired. You know. So if you it's, uh, one, but, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll say, Andrew, as you were going around the room, um, yeah. you, you know, we're all kind of uh, of older age and was around nineties, <laughs> eighties, nineties. Uh, you were having it, a rough it was kind of no. It was kind of <laughs> it was kind of nostalgic though. Like, <laughs> like you know, as you were going talking about you know a few people here and there, it was like. Man, you know, the back in the day it was just it was different. Yeah. Um definitely. Because then you would go and back to first marine division. You were like going in yeah. back. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I was listening. We were listening. Yeah. So yeah, the uh the being my first duty station, 29 Palms, of course, Vic, he was there with me. But uh that crew has always been fairly tight and uh mm-hmm. they all came out and I mean in full fire. How many of you say there was there from 29 Palms? I'd like say nine at least or ten. ten. Yeah, it was yeah. Like something like that. Yeah, yeah it's wow. quite a few. So, uh, yeah, that was really, really cool. Uh, but we had a blast doing that, or I did. Uh, but yeah, I thought it was pretty neat. Uh, I looked around, and of course, you know, there's so many people there. I'm like, if I name one, <laughs> person, then yeah. my world yeah. is over. Good choice. Good move. I was like, how how do I? recognize people without recognizing people right yeah like, it, it was it, it was definitely a good turnout that's for sure yeah 
Yeah. Now, was, was that your daughter that came up on stage? Did your daughter walk up on stage? Uh, no, it was my wife that came up. Okay. Why? Well, you, you, well we were in, I mean, the, where the video that you were live streaming was in the back back there. Yeah. And then, cause I was looking, I was like, is that, who is that? What is that? I couldn't tell who it was. And then. Um, They're all, all the right. same height. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> so we just i mean it was you know from a distance the video yeah. was back so i was trying to picture who that was and then okay yeah, yeah. did you did you catch it this in my speech and i called david uh, chief board officer davis the ceo i called him my second wife <laughs> yeah <laughs> definitely my second wife i told ron that that's kind of cool i said were any of your band officers your second wife yeah good idea <laughs> yeah he uh he just looked at me like I'm gonna kill you right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. I thought it was good. Anyways. Uh and then what we about you, Victor? Back. Were any of your band officers your second wife? Uh no. No, no, no. I uh Aaron? I uh, I mean I got along with uh no, I mean I, I I did serve with Jack at that Miramar. Um and before him, uh that was Miramar, yeah, uh the second time. Uh, before him was Ed Hayes, um, and I got along very well with both of them. Uh, uh, but all the rest of my band officers, I, Zabo, you can have them. Uh, I, I didn't care for working with him. I have to drop uh, everybody's names here, man. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, don't, I don't even care to say it. I don't even care to say it. But uh, and the, but there was a couple others um, that I, I didn't care working for either. You know, right. uh, but uh, I, I mean, I had a good time. I probably had my favorite time working with uh, with uh, Jack Davis. Uh, but Ed Hayes was a close second. Ed Hayes was a fun. So yeah, yeah. I didn't mean so to interrupt. What, Sorry, go ahead. Say it again. I just didn't mean to interrupt your story, Andrew. Oh no, yeah. you're fine. I, I'm just sitting here chatting. So uh, let's see. Um, then we went and had the party that night, which was freaking awesome. Uh, the venue uh, was superb. Uh, yeah. What was it? Family Fun Extreme Theater off yeah. of 16th Street here in Virginia Beach, uh, down by the oceanfront. If you're yeah. going to do a retirement, you're local in this area, by God, hit them up. They're great. Any, they, anything. Not bar, even, yeah. They had, they had food, like uh, like popcorn and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. And then, of course, you could bring in your own, own food. We did pizzas. So, you know, we're cheap and... Uh, so we did pizzas and I think it was cupcakes and fruit. Is that right? Something like that. I don't remember. So yeah. I didn't get, get okay, yeah. I was a lot of pizza. Dessert. Yeah. <laughs> there was a lot of pizza for sure. Yeah. And what was really cool at the end, uh, we thought we were going to have to take the pizzas or something and like get rid of them. And they oh, were like, yeah. no, take all the food and take it to the homeless shelter and give it to them. So they took all the food and, and donated it to a, a, a shelter, which was really cool. Yeah, that is really cool. I mean, I I really like the venue, all the comfy couches and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, you could tell that it was like like a multi purpose venue. There was a you could see that there was like a movie screen that they could drop down. Plus, mm -hmm. you had the live venue stage there. I mean, definitely a, a great venue for that kind of stuff, man. And then of course the band plan, uh, getting the band back together was really That's awesome. Right. That's right, got the band back together. It was a good time. Uh, that was the original rock band from 29 palms when we were there so uh 25 well i guess not quite 25 years ago huh uh 24 ish years ago uh that was the crew that was playing together and they came in and uh put on a heck of a show it was a lot of fun uh and for that many years apart they sounded okay i won't say it's great <laughs> but it sounded i mean it was good but it was a lot of fun <laughs> I, you think? I think the vocalist was the weakest link honestly <laughs> no no name dropping no name dropping <laughs> right no i they put on a good show at least i thought that yeah no, they, no, they, did. they really did they put on a great show yeah but yeah did that party a lot, lot of songs i haven't heard since the 90s <laughs> <laughs> yeah hey stick to what you're good at right stick to what you're good yeah, at. exactly exactly <laughs> no i'm just kidding but definitely some great great tunes yeah we closed that that place down and then uh we decided to go to uh o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o
you you would think I'd be the one that couldn't remember, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, you were pretty. Uh, I was pretty. I was pretty toast at the end there. <laughs> yeah, I remember you walking up to me and you were like, "I'm gonna punch that dude in the face." No, I was like, "Oh man." You- oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, if we get some time, I'll tell you about it on here. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that was a, that was pretty fun. Gotta hear the five stories. Gotta hear them. Yeah. <laughs> You can tell it. Go ahead. You want to tell well, it? So, so, so we got the Murphys, right? And we go in there and there, there's a guy, there's a dude sitting on the right and a dude sitting on the left. And I go up and I thought I might have, uh, you know, kind of cut in front of them or whatever. Uh, in order, I order some drinks and uh, I look over to the left, the guy on the left's like just staring at me and I'm like, I was like, I, I'm sorry, man. I didn't mean to cut you off. He go, I said, I'll buy you a drink. What do you want? And he, he made a, a pretty vulgar comment about uh, a type of pleasuring. And I said, <laughs> I was like, excuse me. And the dude on the right said, well, this is what he said. I said, I, I don't remember what I said at that point, but I was like, I was pretty mad. And the dude turned and walked off. And the guy on the right, we started talking. And I was like, you know him? And he's like, no. And that's when I was like, I was getting ready to knock him out because he said something that I was, I was just, it was just in, inappropriate and and probably not the right time to say it, especially if somebody offers you a drink, mm-hmm. you know, because yeah. they felt like they cut you off, you know, it was just rude. But anyway, so I started talking to the guy on the right and he ended up being a Navy chief, uh, just promoted to chief, not, not too long before that, but yeah. And he looked like he was 12 years old. He did. He did. He, I was like, you just got promoted to chief. He goes, yep. I was like, wow. But I would say at least 15, at least 15. Yeah. He was, right, was we'll 15, go with he, 15. Yeah. He was young he, though. I mean, he looked really, really, young. how, how long was he in? You said t- uh, 10 years. He oh my 10 goodness. Years. He yeah. Chief in 10 years. 10 wow. years. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. He's an uh, engineer. Yeah. They're, they're the boiler, boiler guys. On the, on the, well, he's on an amphib on the cure sarge, but yeah, okay. yeah. But that one dude, yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, hey, you know, I brought him over to introduce him to y'all, and that's yeah. when I was like, I'm about, to, I was about to knock that other dude out. <laughs> Here, y'all take care of him. I'm going back. <laughs> yeah, it was a good time though. Uh, yeah, then, yeah. What was it like? I got back to the room like zero two or something like that. Uh, yeah, it was about two when I got back. Well. See, y'all, I think Mike's wife came and picked y'all up and then yeah. dropped y'all off. And then I was like, um, I can't remember his name now. A couple of them stayed back. So I stayed mm-hmm. back with them, quote unquote, and make sure they were good. They were probably actually making sure I was good. But <laughs> <laughs> I, was way, like, yeah. I, I was like, I'll walk back to my room, which when I've had that much, I like to walk, kind of walk it off anyway, you know, uh, so I'm walking back and I look over and I see Mike and them going to the hotel and I'm like yelling across the street. Have a good night, Mike. <laughs> you know. Very nice. People just staring at me like this drunken idiot. <laughs> but yeah, yeah it was going great. Down there, Every time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fitting right in, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I firmly believe you have to act your freaking shoe size every now and then. If you don't, something, <laughs> life's just too short. You got to act yeah. your shoe size. I mean, come on, you have to. I like that. I just but, that's but at least Andrew, once was, a day. At least once a day, but not yeah. you know. I mean, and this is the it, time, man. But Andrew did good. I kept trying to buy him drinks. He's like, "No, I'm good. I'm good." <laughs> yeah. Well. I was the night before. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So then uh let's see the the following day we went out and uh which was Saturday, right? Uh we went out again. Uh of course Aaron had already taken off at yeah, this point. Yeah, I left driving I home. back yesterday. Yeah. And uh we went out to the oh help me Vic, what's the name of the hotel? Cavalier, right? Oh yeah. Oh the Cavalier, yeah. We went to Cavalier, hung out there, had some drinks. Uh, and then went to a brewery who is a veteran owned brewery. Uh, bunker. Oh, the bunker. That's right. The yeah. bunker. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we hung out there. I don't know. till about midnight or so, something like that. And then went back. So that was pretty cool. And that was the first night since uh, we have had our girls that me and Carlene have been alone 
overnight without at least one of them. It was the first time. And the oldest one is uh, 11. Mm. Yeah. Did you have fun? Uh, we did. We did. We, we Yes, we had fun. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, no, it was a good time. Uh, yep. And then this morning I woke up. You let your, I, you let your hair down. I, I did. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Not, not very much of it, but I let it down. Uh, <laughs> uh, so this morning I woke up, uh, Vic, you drove back, right? Yeah. And, and uh, that was what? Eight hours. It, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's well, it's uh, about a nine, depending on how long you spend at Bucky's, it's about a nine hour trip back. Yeah. That's always the thing, right? <laughs> if if it my wife and kids at Bucky's today, it was a circus in there. It was one of the busiest oh, yeah. I've ever seen it. Well, if That's my wife and kids are with me, it's at least a two hour stop in Bucky's. Oh, yeah. We, we normally spend two hours about anywhere between 30 I, and 45 minutes. Exaggerating a little bit, but yeah, it's longer than a normal. Yeah. Rest area stop. Wow. Wait, Andrew, you haven't been to it yet? You haven't I, been to a Bucky's? I, I have, oh, okay. It's been two hours. Krista. <laughs> yeah, Chris, Krista hasn't. There's one in Florence, South Carolina. I heard they're building one. Right. There's one. They're building one. Yeah, so. Oh, they're so, building like, them all over the Southeast right now. Krista's going to have to make a trip. Yeah. To Pilgrimage. That's right. Yeah. My neighbor and I, uh, uh, about a month ago, we woke up Saturday morning, drove up to Bucky's, and drove back. <laughs> it's two hours north of where he was like, we got to go to Bucky's. We, you know, you know, hey, hell, let's go to Bucky's. All right, cool, you know. And then we came back with all kinds of bags of snacks and stuff like that. And a uh, hundred dollars later, after you know, Bucky's, you know, you know, Bucky swimsuit and Bucky's uh, onesie and you know, Bucky's magnets for the fridge and, <laughs> and Bucky's wow. everything. The world, man. <laughs> oh, everything. Every day. What did you do this weekend? Oh, we went to Bucky's. Ooh, ah. Oh. <laughs> it, de- it depends on where you're out. Some people were impressed you know? that you went to Bucky's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got one. Florida has one in Daytona and St. Augustine. Daytona's only two hours from me. And then they've got another one, I think, up in uh, the northwest, like probably around, uh, oh, what is that place up there? Pensacola. In that area. Mm-hmm. Right on. So uh, this morning I woke up. Uh, we went and got our car that we loaned out. And then I drove back here and I grabbed my guitar. And uh, I practiced a couple of tunes because I had an audition today for oh. Live on Atlantic. So I went over there to do this audition. And uh, it was it was very interesting. I was, it was like a panel of people, kind of like, uh, what was that? Uh, the show? Like a jury? It, or it was kind of like a jury. Yeah, like a jury. Or, 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 promotion or like, board? Meritorious yes. promotion board? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I got, and they had microphones. They had like four microphones. And the guy's like, okay, you can plug up and pick whatever mic you want. And I'm like, do, do I have to plug up? And he's like, no. And I said, do I have to use the mic? And he's like, well, you're going to have to, if you perform for us. And I was like, well, that's fine. But right now, do I have to? And he's like, Oh no, you don't have to. And then the lady next to me was like, uh, you can even come up and get, get personal, get right up here. And I was like, all right. (laughs) (laughs) So I sang, uh, uh, Johnny cash, uh, a boy named Sue. So that was fun. Uh, and then, uh, of course, the whole time I'm kind of cracking jokes and being stupid. But uh, and then I sang Blues Man, uh, the Alan Jackson version of it. Uh, Blues Man. It was fun. And then out of it, though, I got a contact for somebody that might uh, be on the podcast. Ooh, so good. nice. Boom. Yeah, so uh, when do you find out the results of said audition? Yeah, I don't know. That... Oh, we'll you didn't get your... we'll call you. you didn't... You didn't, yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> they, they said we'll call you. Don't worry about it. Was, you didn't okay, get your golden I, ticket. No, I I got a zero ticket. They said you could take <laughs> that hallway and see yourself out. I was like, hey, yeah. <laughs> 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 I don't know if it was good or bad, but I had fun. So <laughs> his bootstrings were dragging behind his shoes. Now, what do they do? Uh, you said it's it, what is it? Something on the Atlantic? Yeah. So. 
apparently they have a bunch of different acts on the boardwalk uh, okay. in that area that set up and play every night or I don't know. How yeah. Often. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but uh, it's like from like seven at night to 11 at night or something like that. Uh, yeah. That right. little stage area, that little park. Uh, yeah. Well, that's some of them. So some of it just depends. There's like, Oh, okay. Hey, there's probably four or five at night. Uh, yeah. So it's more than that. There's probably, I bet you, uh, on a summer like a Friday night and a Saturday night, there's probably up and down the boardwalk. There's probably twelve different bands playing. Oh or wow, tw- twelve different acts. You know, yeah. Uh, it might be just a good single guitar player. It might be a duet. You know, another block or two down, there's a trio going. You know, oh, there's, yeah. there might be a full band up on the stage. You go another block or two down, it's a single person with a you know a battery powered amp. You know, another two couple blocks, it's a okay. another duet. I mean, it's it's. Yeah, it's, hmm. it's on on a, on a summer night. It's pretty. Uh, it's pretty cool with music all up and down the sidewalks. It's pretty cool. Yeah. At least that's what it was when I was there. I, I'm sure it's the same. I don't go to the boardwalk uh, on the norm. Typically, I don't like to hang out with people. Um, well, yeah, people normal. you don't know. People you don't know. Ah, there you go. People you don't know. <laughs> when we were outside smoking our cigars last night, I mean, all those uh, young ladies that were walking to the club next to us looked like your kind of people, man. <laughs> I don't I don't know how you say that's my kind of people. Um, they were scantily dressed, scantily clad, whatever that oh, is. Yeah. They, uh, they were scandalously clad. There, yeah. there was probably something covering nipples and and maybe the the coochie in the front or something. That was about it. <laughs> yeah, the, imp- the, the important shed. parts. <laughs> this is my private square. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. It was uh, it was definitely interesting to see all the crazies walk by and go up to whatever club or whatever was upstairs. Probably the. Probably the Hilton. Was it the Hilton? The, the no, the, club? the, the, the we club right next to the bunk, uh, right next to the bunker. Um, it was uh, upstairs. Oh, P- Peabody's. 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 Yeah, 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 Peabody's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what kind of club that is, but it's, it's definitely a nightclub. Yeah, yeah. One of okay. those. Yeah, one of those nightclubs. Yep. Oh, yeah. I got a keep left. So. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, I had a great weekend, so it was a lot of fun, and I came home, and I uh, had to record a podcast, uh, and then I, I got a break, and then uh, here I am again, so recording this podcast, so it's good. So you got one break uh, uh, ever since Thursday. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, <laughs> minus my recovery on the, the... Well, that was kind of forced. That was kind of forced, you know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> if you did if you didn't take that it probably wouldn't have been a very good retirement <laughs> let's put it that no. way <laughs> i mean it would have been funny funny for us not so funny for true, you true true yeah <laughs> and what was it that uh when my wife went on stage and he was giving her her certificate and he says we're giving your husband back to you a much bigger man than when he yeah came <laughs> yeah i was like yeah that's true it's all good. Yep. Welcome to the club. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I thought it was funny, though. All right. What do you want to chat about now? Mm, let's see. So, well, I mean, I can't, it, gets, it begs the question, like, um, what's your timeline for being uh, staying in the area? I mean, if you're going to do the whole uh, RV oh, yeah. thing and drive around interviewing vets, uh, if you if they actually say, "Hey, we want you to play all summer long," what, what, I mean, what's your commitment then? I don't know. I may tell them to pound sand. Good answer. Um, you just you just <laughs> winging it, huh? I'm you winging. Fit, I when you went cool. to the wing, you fit right in, didn't you? Yeah, swinging like a <laughs> swing. Man. Swing with the wing. <laughs> no, yeah, I don't I get accused of that a few there. times. Yeah, I don't know what that means, but I mean, because I wasn't at the wing, but just a few months before we got deployed it, and then got back, and yeah. So that, yeah. yeah, so the air wing and, and the yeah. division are like two different worlds, right? Oh yeah, yeah. They're very. The air wing is much more lax. Yeah. That's what they say, but we weren't well, relaxed. They have a, we were well, they have a, not the band. But the right. uh, the pilots and the yeah, everybody over have, there, everybody chill. 
they're pretty they have sure. more individual task and responsibility that they got to get done to to ensure that they're meeting mission but division you kind of have to you know work together as a whole almost uh yeah d- depending on if it's you know you're doing your workups for rotation or whatever they they depend a lot on each other the you uh, know, the once higher, I was uh the- officer to officer to enlisted ratio at the wings right definitely uh bleeds yeah. into the lower ranks yep once I had to go pick up the mail for the band over at company office. And I was, I mean, and I'm talking to you, fresh newbie, you know, cause I went from the school of music. We drove across country on our honeymoon, literally. And we got to El Toro and I was over there and um, I went to the mail room office and I said, I'm here to get the, the mail for the band. And the guy goes, band. He goes, what does that stand for? I'm like band, you know, like musical instruments. I go, I don't know. Ballistic anti-nuclear division, the freaking band. <laughs> I was like, I don't know, but. <laughs> yeah, that was my first experience with the El Toro. But El Toro, we had a good, I, I thought, you know, Master Gunny Price, he treated us good and we had a good band. I mean, they had like a, one of those dry erase calendars on the wall there at the band hall at El Toro. And by the way, Andrew, you guys, were y'all, don't laugh, were y'all in Desert Storm too? Or were you, I think you're behind me a little bit. No. Okay. Maybe yeah, not more than no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but when we came back from Saudi Arabia, First Marine Division Band had already come back, and y'all were playing for us. So I, I've got a few snapshots because um, that's when we had disposable cameras, like, and you had to like take your film yeah. to you know came out and get it developed. Up, yeah, click, wind it up, click. But yeah. I know First Marine Division Band was already back from the Gulf War, and y'all played for us when we came back because we came back last. I think division because the division had been there the longest, and then um. Y'all came back first, but then, but um, no, Master Guns Price had a dry race calendar on the wall, and it was a three month calendar. And when he set that new calendar up every time, the first thing he would do is go in there and put OC on several days out of the month, and it was occupationally committed. And what those were were our days off. Yeah, he always took good care of us. He um, made sure whenever we did gigs, because we were always doing gigs out in LA and all over, you know, just. Santa Ana, Los Angeles, Hollywood, everywhere. And anytime we had a gig, he made sure that we were, had good, if we could, had decent transportation, mostly, um, always got fed, you know, or, or that the sponsor was feeding us somewhere like a, back, okay, laugh, you can laugh now, Golden Corral or, you know, yeah, or somewhere. but we, got, but yeah, back right. then that was good in the nineties, you know, but we, we got fed well. He took good care of us. Master Guns Price took fantastic care of us, but he was the OIC, acting OIC at the time, OIC, so. He, he took good care of us. I mean, treated us well. So, My first day arriving at 29 Palms, very proud, like my brand new first day. Here's my first band, roll up to the gate. Uh, yeah, I show my ID and he's like, uh, well, what are you doing here? And I'm like, I'm, I'm checking into the band. And he goes, we have a band? <laughs> yeah, I, I play drums for the band. He goes, yeah, good luck. I have no idea where you're going. <laughs> like, uh, thanks man appreciate it <laughs> that's hilarious thanks for nothing <laughs> you just drive what did you drive around look uh well i actually I called andrew i was like hey man i'm on base <laughs> he's like come to the house i'm like okay oh <laughs> uh, yeah those are the good times oh yeah <laughs> but it's the band it's the band you know like Look, it's the band. It's pretty woman, right? Julia Roberts. Look, it's the band. Yeah. Kind of, kind of keeping with that, with that theme, Andrew. What was? What, uh, did you live in base housing back in the day, or? Oh yeah. So uh, Twenty Nine Palms. It was yeah. Um, like you, you, you've been there, right? Go on the base, hang a right, mm-hmm. and right there on immediately on the left, that was the old like non NCO housing, right? Okay. When I got there. I was, of course, a Lance Corporal, so they like, okay, that's what we're right. going to put you. Well, then they were condemning all of them, right? So apparently, just, yeah. around that area is where they dumped all of the waste of some nature. Uh, was there. <laughs> and uh, so they were condemning them all. Stayed in that house yeah. all the time there. But yeah. uh, literally up the hill from there was the CG's house. And uh, mm. so he looked down and see the the peasants. at The, the peasants, village. yeah. Yeah, yeah, with all the waste, yeah, with all the with all his waste <laughs> right there, making sure oh, those yeah. houses were stout though, they weren't even like cinder oh, yeah. block, they were solid concrete walls. 
Well, I'm telling so, yeah, some of this newer newer housing do you live, yours is fairly newer at for story, right? Yeah, they're they, yes, kind of. Nah, 2000s at least. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but like the new, new like I got a brand new house at, at Lejeune in Terrawan Terrace. Like literally, they just came and dropped the keys and said these houses are ready. Gate got one of the first keys and, and it wasn't like it was just the quality was just and that was two thousand seven. So yeah, but yeah, I would I would say overall when you look at the housing, I learned a lot about the housing here uh, specifically. Mm-hmm. So in each area, uh, a different company runs the housing uh, housing thing. So on Fort Story, it's ran by the Army. Uh, so okay. they have a company that they've hired to run the housing for the Army, and right. then. The Navy uh, side, they had their their housing uh, mm-hmm. people, whoever's it was. So I had Marine come in and and they like they wouldn't fix his AC and he had like kids and it was stupid hot and all kinds of stuff. So he went out in town and and had to get a hotel and stuff like that because he's like, I don't want to leave my kid in the, in the hot. Right. And they mm-hmm. weren't coming out to fix it. Uh, so uh, he was like, can I get reimbursed for that? And I'm like, well, we can we can sure try. So he went in and talked to them and they basically kicked him out and said, no, we're not talking about this. Uh, so mm-hmm. then I called over on behalf of him and they wouldn't talk to me. I was like, okay, well, I'll, we'll just drive over there. And I drove over and uh, I, I was literally purposely crossed my arms and leaned back against the wall. And I was talking to the lady and I didn't raise my voice. I didn't do anything. And then she, uh, she said that I yelled at her and, and all kinds of stuff, called her names and stuff. And wow. I'm like, oh yeah, it was, it was ridiculous. And at that point I had to go, I, or I didn't have to, I went to see the base uh, command master chief and I went in and I was talking to him about it. And he's like, I'm telling you now the housing is, is crap. Yeah. Yeah. The, how, the contract that the, they signed was for 50 years. That's five, mm-hmm. years, mm-hmm. 50, which means you, they can do whatever the heck they want. And Congress mm-hmm. is the one that signed all that stuff. And mm-hmm. it was ridiculous. Like, how do you hold somebody accountable when they have a 50 year contract? You know, it's right. pretty difficult to do that. Uh, yeah. So that's why the housing here, at least, is as bad as it is. Yeah. But it's the so first fair. housing I lived in was at Bowling Air Force Base. That was my first duty station was eight oh, to nine. But, but, I, but yeah, I lived, well, I lived out in town in an apartment first. I had to get on a list there. I mean, you can imagine there's only a certain amount of base housing in the national capital region. Right. Uh-huh. Um, but anyway, I, it, it was definitely older, but I felt that that housing was probably better than the housing at Lejeune. And I mean, you go back, that was 2000, 2001. <laughs> so it was, man. Yeah. But, uh, you know, to your point about, you know, the, these companies, like I think it's Lincoln military housing at, at Camp it Pendleton. Lincoln something else that that lincoln's yeah. contract was uh up, so somebody else got the contract yeah but i remember liberty. we uh pretty liberty got it yeah and when i was at uh fitz marines we did a staff nco officer social uh-huh. and, and they had a we had a first sergeant in the regiment that lived in base housing now as you can imagine first aren't the pre- probably pretty immaculate right had i don't think he had any kids or anything like that but uh not small children in the house but when he went to move out i think they charged him like i can't remember what it is now it was definitely over a thousand dollars for for carpet replacement they're supposed to replace that carpet every three years and he had lived there i think three over three years but i think it may have been four years and they charged him for it so it got brought up in discussion about how they're you know fraud waste and abuse and all that and and it's like if you're going to do that to a first sergeant imagine what they're doing that to junior marines absolutely yeah junior marines that are afraid to go to their command because now they feel like they may be in trouble with something so they're not going to take it to their command so they're probably just going to fork over the money and and not have any money right so but yeah there was a lot of that going on wow i will say when i was at Pendleton. Uh, that was probably the best housing that I've had. Uh, that was brand new, like literally brand yeah. new. 
to live in it. It was probably the nicest. Uh, but Which I community was, was that? Oh, hmm, that's a good question. Were you uh, over by, uh, Pine over by Edson Rage? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, those are all. I had a couple of buddies that lived over there. Yeah. Pine Oaks that, or something like that. Something. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember. I, I will say the houses, in my opinion, they're not not built sturdy. I will put it that way. Uh, not like they used to be, you know. But that goes for cars. That goes for. That's everything. everything. <laughs> That's furniture. Yeah. Oh my God! Yes, furniture is probably two to three times the cost it used to be, and it doesn't even last a quarter of the amount of time. That's no. I mean, it, you know, there's got to be those uh, those full world print couches still out there somewhere <laughs> from back when we were kids. <laughs> what, were, what were the brown the brown ones that they had like the yeah uh, yeah the floral the had the floral patterns on it yeah yeah oh, no, no, they were like they're the ones that had the uh like a scene of a uh, a house or something uh oh, okay back, yeah yeah on the cushion yeah <laughs> that was really that was really popular uh in uh our area in Arkansas oh well, we yeah, we had them. We had them too, but they had like wood arms. The arms heavy were wooden, like wooden arms. Yeah, but those things were hard as a like it had to have been hickory. I don't know, but I I just remember you bump a knee or something on them things, and it hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep, they don't make them like they used to. No, no, definitely not. Uh... Don't forget the macrame flower pot hanging at the corner of the room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My little glass. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, uh, that was part of my uh, my reason. When I was at Quantico, uh, I could not stand. Well, obviously, I mean, I, I couldn't stand my band officer there. Um, so I decided, you know, I, I got to do something. Uh, I was a brand new staff sergeant and I, I'd never, I mean, I was hazed straight up hazed on the podium, uh, in front of the entire band. Um, ru well, I, I'd been on deck two weeks, ruined any credibility I would have had, uh, you know, or any, uh, any type of, uh, you know, first impression with the band, uh, before I even got a chance to leave the gate. It was, it was awful. Uh, so I'm like, I, I got to find a hobby or I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to like either implode or hurt somebody. Um, so uh, I went on, uh, I went on, uh, on uh, Craigslist and uh, found a bunch of guys, uh, different people selling various woodworking tools and uh, got a little bit of a table saw and a drill press and a miter saw and started hacking and slashing and cutting and hammering and man glitter this and, you know, and how do I, how do I, how do I man, to stain it? All that man kind of glitter. Stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Slash it. <laughs> But like, and then and then eventually, I could I actually had something to show for it. You know, it's <laughs> like I don't you said, like, said manglers. But... You know, but I'm I'm completely self taught. You know, <laughs> watching you know University of YouTube on how to do wood you know woodworking. Yeah. And uh, then I uh, I went to an estate sale and this dude was selling a, an entire. It was like it's like a twenty two book set on woodworking hardback books. Uh, so I bought all those for like fifty bucks total. You know, oh, and then like shark. started reading all that, and they're like, "Oh, so this is how you adjust your table saw. Oh, this is how you're supposed to use the router the right way. Oh man!" So like, uh, I mean, I'm completely self-taught, and uh, I've made various things throughout the house. Made my uh, my wife a raised hey, blanket chest. Look, look, look right here. Still got them all. Yeah. Still got them all. That, that <laughs> I was gonna say the important thing. Got is all the digits. Have all yeah. your fingers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> got oh all yeah. The, you made, you made that. Yeah, yeah, he made the cover block right here. And it was the screen's gonna come out right there. That's the cover block. He made that for me when I was a drone searcher. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was pretty proud of that design too. It's all held together with magnets and stuff. There's no hinges in it. Yeah. Um, nice. But uh yeah, so I mean uh, that that was that was my stress relief. Uh so I, nice. I was I was happy to do that. But like you, you were saying that you know they don't make them like that anymore, you know, furniture. Uh yeah. The, the lost art right you know uh when Ooh. when when shit goes south uh people need to know how to how to how to do things with their hands uh yeah you, you need to be able to produce something you know make uh, it from whether, scratch and know how it's made properly you know yes you know you need to be able to know how to produce something uh mm -hmm. and not rely on other people's talent for your living 
We don't need Norm. We have Victor, and I'm, I can make this old house from three biscuits and some wood glue. <laughs> <laughs> that's our joke around here. Man. Oh, and Norm Abram. That, that's he's, yeah, he's that's why I said. This uh, is Norm. Abram. I can make this house from three biscuits and some dowels <laughs> and some wood glue, you know. Yeah, yeah. it's true. It's true, though. So, yeah. Because that's what Ron did when he got out of the Marine Corps. When he retired, um, he didn't have a job, but he went and worked for a local guy here who um and, and learned to be he he tootled tutelaged under a Finnish uh, carpenter, and the mm-hmm. guy was like a master carpenter, but he didn't really know it. He didn't act well. He was kind of arrogant, but he didn't act arrogant. But he he taught Ron everything he knew, and Ron liked woodworking because he'd been building some things for me in Hawaii, and he didn't know how to do it really well in fact he built me one of those things that goes over you know the back of your toilet you know that you put like towels in and stuff that Uh would sit over your toilet in fact the joke was it it had one of the doors had like a line through it where the saw had he put the saw in the wrong door you know in the door (laughs) so but he filled it in with like you know wood glue and stuff so that was that we had that in our house for many years before we dumped it but um but he worked under this guy for two years only making like ten dollars an hour until he got his gs job on base but he learned how to do, you know, put in door frames and put in framing and put in staircases and, you know, uh, do ladder wells and stairwell. I call ladder wells stairwells and things like that. But uh, it's 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 nice to know how to do that. And then he would then we do stuff in the garage. I'd say, what are you making? Because I'm making a jig. And I'm like, well, what are you making a jig for? Just build something. And he goes, no, no, no. You have to have a jig to, you know, make this in order to make all the other stuff. And we'd be like, OK, fine, you know, but. Once I learned to just leave him alone and let him do his thing and just just go back inside and make the custard and let him do the flying. and <laughs> That's from The Right Stuff. Have y'all ever seen that movie, The Right Stuff? Yeah, yeah nope. it's like, you handle the custard, I'll handle the flying. Okay. <laughs> that kind of thing, Very so. nice. I used to make, uh, or I still, I can't, I can't still, uh, but I made uh, like coin displays. It was like one of my first little side hustles, you know. Mm-hmm uh various coin displays but like when i my my version of a coin display i made a bunch of jigs so that i can batch them out quickly and do them repetitively over and over and over mm-hmm. uh but and whenever somebody asked for a coin display I and mean, i would never make just one i'd make four or six right or exactly. however much wood i had you know uh but the jigs help out a lot uh mm-hmm. and i you know sell them for 40 50 60 dollars a pop depending on how big they were how they wanted what they wanted to made out of uh but there was a little side hustle uh for a while that i did yeah, very nice. Yeah, we just got a piece. I know this is. I'll make it quick, but we just got a piece. It's actually a joke. It's called Jokers. It's a Joker game. It's like a peg. It's kind of like Trouble, but with with cards as well. Um, but it's a peg and Joker game, and um, and it's wooden peg game that we play because we go to a friend's house and play cards a lot, and and um, we're board game people. But the pegs that are going to go in it actually come from like a cribbage game, I think. So um, I was just going to say cribbage. <laughs> It's it, it's not cribbage, yeah. but it's 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 like the old. Remember the game Trouble that you pop. You have to yeah. come out of home and yeah. go around, but it's like <laughs> that. But it's on a wooden peg game, and like up to eight people can play. But we played this with our friends when we go to their house uh, on the weekends a lot. Um, but it's it's a peg, and 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 their parents made it. We couldn't find it online. Ron finally found one, and I think it's a handmade pe- wooden peg game that somebody made, and they're selling them for like one hundred fifty dollars, handmade, hand painted. So we're gonna make one and try to do it because we want to have one for ourselves too but i, I know a guy nice makes uh cribbage boards <laughs> really oh yeah. do you make them victor yeah. oh you I do play oh, cribbage. Okay. i play cribbage and i make my own boards yeah oh. i don't know how i play cribbage but i've heard of it so but the pegs were it's cribbage a pegs. Game. it's a card game oh really yeah, yeah. a lot hmm. of people think that uh, cr- the game of cribbage uh, involves the board the board is just a scorekeeper it's just a score pad uh, oh, okay. Cribbage is actually a card game. You just keep score on the board. We might have to talk afterwards about our Joker thing because you might have. I don't know if you've heard of Joker. I haven't. Joker peg game, but yeah, so fun mm. stuff. But yeah, make Joker boards too. I guess maybe we'll Joker see. Bo- I will introduce you to it. Yes, you might like that. Yeah, and see what okay. you think. Yeah. Challenge accepted. Get challenge accepted. I go, oh yeah, I got my got my cup in the mail. Oh, uh, look at that. Oh. Notice how the rest of the three of us aren't drinking. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just started. I got a late start because I took a nap. I took I'll a nap my, and I had a late my, my liver unpickle. <laughs> yeah, it's still coffee. It's still, it's still cycling through. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. Still no, trying to okay. recover here. Yeah. Hey, um, sad note. Let me get her name. Um, it was a girl you might have known. Um, hold on. I'm gonna. I don't know if I can do this. Um, she passed away. She was at the Marine Division from 2009 to 2012. She was a, what did she play? What did she play? Mm, I don't know what she played. She passed away. She was 33. She had cancer. Um, mm. Which let's see if I can. First Marine Division. She was only there for a few years. Oh, what was her name? I can't look it up without, I'm afraid I'll lose you guys on the Zoom. Uh, it should stay on the background. If anything, we lose the the. Picture. We might might lose your picture, but we should be able to do it. Let me pull this up real quick here. Okay, Laura Nicole Calvary. Did any of you guys know her? No, I don't remember that name. I need to go back to my Zoom. Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. Yeah, I got an email today about her passing away. She you said was 30, 33? She was 33, unfortunately. Oh, wow. Passed away mm. from cancer. Sucks. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. She was at the division from 2009 to 2012. I thought someone, one of you gentlemen might remember. Oh, 9 to 12. 2009 to 2012. She only did one tour in the Marines. So I got out. So, mm. yeah. I was at Miramar that whole time. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, unfortunately, being the new newsletter editor... My obituary is up to like five already this year. So, and she wasn't mm -hmm. a member of the MCMA, but we, even regardless, regardless of whether they're a paying member of the MCMA, um, I, we still post anyone in, who was a Marine musician in the newsletter. That's just what we do. So, you know, it's speaking of which to the funeral uh, on Friday, uh, who was that for again? It was for Gary Peterson. He had been um, a Marine musician and then he was a trombone player. Um, he was in, I'm trying to think of the exact years he was in, but he also became the drum major for the Commandant Zone, and he became the drum major for the President Zone as well. He's only one of two to actually do that. And then when he left the President Zone, he went back to the field band as well. So he um, just, you know, was around for, you know, a long time. He um, was a Master Gunnery Sergeant, retired. Um, so, Yeah. I, I did not serve with him personally. Um, there were only four Marine musicians there. Myself and Ron was there. Christian Flores was there. And a guy named Chris Cushman. I don't know. He only served for four years. I know that. But, um, um, he's a local um, police officer here in Beaufort. He knew Gary because Gary ended up here. You know, Gary was originally from Salt Lake City, Utah. So, uh, but um, yeah, it was it was good. The funerals these days, I did not realize, guys, I hadn't been to a funeral out there at the cemetery in a while. I'd take a lot of photos out there, I told you, at the cemetery um, for headstone photos for Find a Grave. But it went really fast. He'd been cremated. And then we all went back to the AM vets um, and, um, and kind of we spoke to his son, Gary Jr. And his granddaughter has never been to an evening parade. So they're going to get out there as soon as they can and let her enjoy that. And of course, you all know Dwayne. We saw Dwayne on your video on mm -hmm. your live feed um, and Dwayne's there, but anyone can actually schedule a tour of the president's zone. They just have to call and arrange, you know, make an appointment. Um, they'll be glad to give him a tour. But I think if his granddaughter um, goes out there, they'll be glad to give her a tour, especially her grandfather being in the commandant zone and the president's zone. They'll be delighted to give her a tour. And um, I think she would enjoy an evening parade. So um, his granddaughter also played violin in college and things like that. So she was a musician herself. Oh. And I think they'll have a great time. But, um, you know, we told him who we were and Ron knew um, Ron knew Gary when they were here at Paris Island. There was a, I think it was General Habel that um, had a big he, he, he didn't have a stash. Um, I guess Gary Peterson and I, a guy named William Kemp had these big like G. Gordon Liddy stashes, you know, and the, the general was kind of jealous of them and made the whole band shave all their stashes. <laughs> um, he didn't like it or something. But uh, about the curly cue. Did no, they didn't have the curly cue. Just. um just, I mean, a really heavy, thick, thick stash. Oh, you know? okay. Just bag of mustache. Um, but I, you know, this was back in eighty three, nineteen eighty three. So, uh, so, but um, it, I mean, so everyone talked. <laughs> Christian, R Christian, and when Christian met him, um, he was Gary was Christian's um first drum major, so he kind of looked up to him and, and and admired him a lot. So he got up and spoke a little bit, talked about that once the band was doing a slow march. And um, Gary's mm -hmm. cover got knocked. 
And so he did a U-turn and was coming around or something and ended up doing a backwards slow march, like the moonwalk almost. So that was a cute story. <laughs> you know, the things you improvise and adapt to um, <laughs> try to fix your mistakes. He said it was like, a he, I think he called it a moonwalk, but it was like a moonwalk doing the Michael Jackson backwards slow march, you know, trying to fix your mistake because the band's going the wrong direction. So, wow. so it was a cute story. Um, I mean, y'all, all, we've all seen the dumb stuff, right? You know, so that, and that's what makes the story. So, and some of us have 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 done the dumb stuff more more yes, than we others. Have. We are the dumb stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. I know you got some good ones because you were up at eight and nine. Uh, oh and man, I, I, I can't remember all of them, but a lot of them are are you know, obviously have to do with with drill, right? You mm-hmm. know, drop whether it's dropping a weapon or or. Or a guy slapping another guy in the back of the head when going to order arms because you know you're kind of close. And if you swing out to, I mean, y'all have probably seen the boot camp videos of recruits accidentally hitting drill instructors, right? Yeah, that uh, a kid throwing up on the back of another dude, like, oh. and, and then we went to do the rifle manual, vomit goes flying everywhere because it was all over his hands. Yeah, it's just a lot of dumb stuff. <laughs> Dropping bayonets. Uh, I, you know, obviously the cover's falling off and all that stuff, but marching, <laughs> marching the wrong direction. <laughs> right face. Yeah. You're on the right. No, we, we, well, we had a platoon commander. This what this was actually during a rehearsal. It wasn't during actual, but we had a platoon commander that called the wrong command and we all went with the command instead of what we knew was right. <laughs> orders, right? What's that? Instant willingness, obedience to orders, yeah, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. But the good thing is, during a rehearsal, it wasn't during actual. You know, if it'd been during a live event, we wouldn't we wouldn't have done that. But during live events, yeah, just you know, dropping weapons, bayonets. The the eerie feeling is when somebody like actually locks their knees and goes down. Because because you hear them and you're like, oh, that didn't sound good. And then they have in the back, they'll have people come out and kind of pick them up and drag them off. And one dude fell and did it. And all you could hear was they have the metal cleats on the bottom of their shoes. And you could hear those things dragging across the ground it's like, <laughs> oh, man, <laughs> he is definitely out. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. I passed out one time in a ceremony. Oh really? Uh, I've never, I never, I never did. No, me too. I was. Oh, my man. Aaron and the band, they've got the instruments. And in, in over at El Toro, we did it over down at the. Den, it was dental. I think it was dental guys over there in that green grass field, and there was all those shade trees around. And then mm-hmm. you just hear all that clanking of the trombones and the tubas when they're passing out. Clank, clank. That's all the instruments yeah. clanking as everybody hits the deck. I'm like, what are they? passing out for it just bent <laughs> your knees it's shaded over here i know it was hot at el toro but clank. so there's a lot of clanking going on when they're hitting the deck yeah. i was 29 palms first band <laughs> and i remember i was fairly fairly new i think and we had just finished uh it was the speeches so we just set the drums down in front of us and uh, i remember it was like the couple ceremonies before they were like, don't lock your knees, don't lock your knees, don't lock your knees. Mm-hmm. So we're standing on that parade deck, which is like at an angle, right? It's like this. So you're standing here. So you have to lean forward. Uh, and uh, I had my knees locked and I, I said out loud, Oh, my knees are locked. And then I unlocked. <laughs> I, I was like, Whoa. I fell right over my drum, hit the trumpet player in front of me, almost knocked him over. And oh wow! Next thing I know, there's two corpsmen, one on each side, dragging me off, and I'm like, "What are you doing?" And they're like, "Did you just pass out?" I was like, "No, I didn't." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. And I was like, "Oh, I, I need to go back." They're like, "No, no, no! You you get to sit this one out, buddy." That was the only oh, time. Man. I passed out. Well, when I passed out, I was the EC. <laughs> what really? Did you hit the yeah. deck? Uh, I didn't hit the deck. Well, I almost dropped to my knees. Like uh, on the deck, I didn't fall over, but I like started dropping to my knees. I couldn't see anything. I mean, like I had the whole tunnel vision that closed in. Yeah. I'm like, what the yeah. hell's happening? My knees buckled, and words comes up behind me, and uh, and Navarro, 
uh, they come up, grab me, and like take me. Uh, it was a, at a, a wing ceremony, so all the aircraft static display. So they take me under the wing of one of the C 130s that was out there for a static display. So I'm in the shade. I'm like, oh man. And then, like, we're in like hangar number six or seven. And the EMTs or the corpsmen were all the way down at hangar one. Mm. Oh so the, the corpsman calls the EMT and it takes like 10 minutes for the, 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 the ambulance to get all the way down. And the whole time, mm. you so like 10 oh, minutes no. you this bitch coming all the way down the flight line. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> this is not happening to me. They roll up like right behind the band. You know, mm. like lights going, horns going, whole nine yards, ceremony's still going. The the, the bitch is still talking about how, how cool he is and how important he is. And I'm like, you gotta be <laughs> done, you know. And then the, and then the guy's like, hey man, hey, we're just gonna check you out real quick. You know, we know you got some corn around here somewhere. We're just gonna check you out real quick. So ha- have a seat, you know, on my, my gurney in here. And I'm like, okay. So as soon as I go into the and sit down, motherfucker gets in the doorway and he puts his he puts his hands up like this. He goes, all right, I got some good news. I got some bad news for you. And I'm like, bad news? What? And he goes, now that you're in my ambulance, I have to take you to the hospital. And he was oh crazy. And I'm like, what? No fucking way. He goes, dude, dude, don't make this hard on either one of us. And I'm like, I'm about to plow through your ass. you got to be kidding me. I'm not going. He goes, come on, man. This is a C- this is a CG's policy. I have to take you to the hospital. Jesus, uh, come on, man. Yeah, so I had to go all the way to the hospital, <laughs> get an EKG, and they, oh, you're fine. I know I'm fine. Okay, you can leave now. You gonna give me a ride back? No, sorry. Hey, Amy, can you come pick me up? I passed out. I'm at the I'm at the hospital. Oh, I'm here. <laughs> Awful. Mm. <laughs> yeah, Awful. I don't even. I don't think. Uh, I I mean, I've I've had some ceremonies where it's it was rough. The we did the CNO uh, change of command, uh, chief of naval operations. So essentially, the commandant for the navy. Uh, we did his at Annapolis one July. So July, Maryland, heat, humidity. I, I don't know what I don't remember what the temperature was, but I just remember it got to the point. We it was two in that two hour and twenty minute ceremony. Oh my God. And it got to the point where I quit sweating. So I think, you know, 10, 15 more minutes maybe, but like three or four people passed out. But yeah, it's I was sweat sweat talk. right. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. It was all talk because uh, all we did was do a march out, uh, present the colors, so so um, present arms, and this is basic. We didn't do like any rifle manual or no anything, just a march on, and present stand. the colors. Yeah, and stand. That's it. Our, that was the one. Our platoon commander was like the troop commander was was the navy uh, lieutenant commander, I believe. And he forgot to put us at at uh, ceremonial at ease. Uh, well, that was nice of him. Yeah. Well, our platoon commander about forty minutes into it, and he's like, he come to attention about face, and then put us at ease. <laughs> he's like, screw it. They don't want to do the right thing. I'm going to do it. it. It was forty minutes into it, but yeah, I got a good story about uh, a marine being in a navy ceremony. So there was this colonel I met. This dude was crusty, man, like big time crusty. I think mm-hmm. I might have been an Oki. I can't remember where I was at. Uh, but he was like, okay, uh, so here I was, right? I was the commander of troops and we're at the Naval Academy and I'm the mm-hmm. I'm the Marine, right? Uh in charge or the commander of troops. And then we're doing a ceremony, and in the middle of the ceremony, you know, they're talking and talking and talking. And he's like, I everything just started going like this. And he thought to himself, he's like, I am a Marine in a Navy ceremony and I'm the head guy and I'm about to pass out. He said, I can pass out and be made fun of the rest of my career. Or I can say, no, I ain't passing out. And I could call everyone to attention and say, pass and review. That was his options. And he was like, well, I ain't passing out. So he comes to attention, turns around. Calls everyone to attention, says pass and review. Boop, everybody's doing their thing. The guy's still up there talking. And, uh, <laughs> he gives forward march and boop, off they go. Guy's still talking. And then it, they they make the turn like they're coming in. And finally, the guy's like, well, I guess I got to put this down. I'll come back in a minute. They're doing the pass and review. So they finish the pass and review and get all the way down. Uh, so after the ceremony, uh, the uh, – uh, who was it? 
Oh, the general, the general, I was like looking for the, uh, the guy and, uh, comes up to him and starts yelling at him. And he's like, wah, la, 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 la. And, uh, the Sergeant major came up. He said, it was the Sergeant major who saved him, uh, came up and was like, I can't believe that they would talk this long and do this and do that. And is talking about the, uh, uh, the ceremony, like, like the person talking or whatever. And, uh, he said, if it wasn't for him, his career would have been over. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it's dangerous. I mean, as as both of y'all have experienced it, you know, you easily could have hit your head off the ground. And then what, you know? Yeah. But we did. We never had Yuma. anything like that happen. But yeah. Yuma and Twenty Nine Palms are hot, mm-hmm. and I mean, we used to go out to Yuma to do change of commands and. um Master Guns Price would tell everybody, easy, easy, you know, easy. And I'm not kidding. Some of the tall guys, the big guys, those, we would come back and be on the C-130s flying back. And um, their core frames had melted, had like melted to Mm -hmm. that flight line out there. I -hmm. mean, somebody like you, Vic, who's so tall. (laughs) Y'all know what my husband said when he met Vic last night? He shook his hand, or last week, he shook his hand, he met him. And then he stepped back, he goes, because god damn you're a tall son of a bitch. <laughs> you're a big son of a bitch. <laughs> Oddly funny. enough, I mean my first duty station was 29 Palms. I came close once to passing out. Mm-hmm. I never passed out 29 Palms. And then I spent nine years of my career at Miramar flying mm-hmm. to Yuma and back to do gigs. Right. And the mm-hmm. last my last time there, we never drove out. We flew out the morning of, did the gig and flew back. I'll see and, and like so no time to acclimatize. You just, right. it's just like shock and, to and your system. Hot. And never passed out at Yuma, never this. passed out at 29 Palms. I passed out on a flight line in San Diego when it's fucking sunny and 70. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't matter, but it just, it's the heat and the humidity. And I mean, yeah. like you said, we flew those C-130s all up and down the coat. And you know what we do? We take our little web belts off and we fl- put them around our foreheads and we put them inside the red webbing on the C-130 mm-hmm. seats and we sleep like that. You know, <laughs> we do some stupid ass shit, <laughs> especially in Okinawa, flying from Okinawa up to Iwakuni. Yeah, that's what we do a lot because we have to sleep standing up. Oh man, I don't know Jack Allen if he's still alive. Do you, anybody remember Jack Allen from the school? Big guy. Mm, I don't know that name. Jack Allen, Quake and Bush, and Farquhar, and all them. Scotty Johnson. That's how we'd all sleep sitting there with those whip belts around our forehead on the C one thirties. But yeah, but no. To y'all's defense, it's just hot, and guys just have it harder. It's probably because y'all drink more. I don't know. <laughs> You're dehydrated <tired> more. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, it could be that. Maybe that had a lot hot. to do with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe you know, guys don't drink like, as much water. The they worst always- condition was like the the new um like astroturf fields that have those rubber pellets mm-hmm. oh god yeah though i mean that was like sitting on like a like a heater because those rubber pellets would have just absorbed heat yeah. you know and like you're just standing there and you could feel the radiant heat coming off those rubber pellets man and my feet would get so fucking hot i'm like god we when we, my uh my last time at uh miramar they were trying to turn our parade deck, which is next to the band hall. They were trying to turn that into one of those astroturf fields. Oh, and I'm like, no, don't do it. Don't do it. And I went to the chief of staff and I'm like, worst decision ever. Don't do it. They're horrible. And Becker is like, yeah, no, it's a good idea. No, it is not. <laughs> do not do it. Leave it grass. Leave it grass. But the time I was in, too, in the early 90s, um, Almost spilled my drink. That's alcohol abuse. And by that time, um, <laughs> can't have that. And by that time, early nineties, when I was in um, our blues, you know, our deltas, they were coming out with gabardine delta pants. So, because otherwise, the pants were still wool. Our gabardine, our deltas were still wools, you know. So, um, and wearing that, you guys, I just, I mean, you know, it's hard. You don't think about things like that, you know. Well, I don't know if the wool breathes better or not than the gabardines. I don't know. Gabardines might be sticky. They're all hot. Kinder, kinder gentler Marine Corps. Huh? I'd say kinder <laughs> gentler Marine Corps. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. And anytime <laughs> somebody said, but it's a dry heat. Yeah, yeah. F you. Yeah, yeah. F, I yeah. don't care. 120 <laughs> degrees is still hot. Yeah. Heat yeah. is heat. That's all, that's all there is to it. Heat is heat. Yeah. Okay. Heat is heat. Yeah. 
you know, mm. and flying from Okinawa to Iwakuni, I used to, you know, I was a Lance Corporal, so I was on the loading detail. I used to go in there we because I was married. So that if they had room in Okinawa, you could um, bill it with your spouse up there. And there was a few married spouses. Um, I think once Harrington and Bartholomew got married and then there was Tracy and Vernon Harris and then myself and Ron, we could bill it in the, you know, the married billets up there and everyone else was in the barracks. We'd go up there and I, I literally had to peel my camis off of me because, you know, the C-130s. <laughs> This might be a little too much, but here you can you can edit this if you need to, AJ. But I'd get in there and we would run over because they had the new PX up at Iwakuni. I remember when they built the new PX. Okay, so this is what, 92 maybe? So I'd get in there and my girlfriend Tracy, she's black, okay? And we get up there and her and Blaybaum would be in the PX and um Barth or Harrington would be in there. She married, you know, Ben Bartholomew eventually. But they'd get in there and I would peel my candies off, soaking wet, you know. And I'd be like, guys, I'm here. Finally, I made it. We'd go shopping the PX and girl stuff because they had great girl stuff up there in the PX. And then she'd go, yeah, I, I I know, Krista. She goes, you do have a big butt getting those candies off. She goes, it's like God went, poof, butt on a white girl. <laughs> like, I said, what do you do? Look at me in the shower? You know, because it just it's a girl thing. Sorry, guys. <laughs> But you have to understand Tracy Harris. She's she's pretty cool. We're still friends. She lives down here in Hinesville at, at Fort Stewart. But um, anyway, she's a teacher. Yeah, guys don't do that in the locker room. Yeah. They don't. <laughs> Dang, Andrew, you got a big butt on you. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just the whole Cami thing and the whole C-130 thing, stuff like that. So I think you might have liked I, that Peabody Club. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> we had some good times a lot of i could just tell you the stories but i mean y'all have got them too we just oh, yeah. everybody's got them everybody's and got like them. rob hufford we used to fly a lot and um rob hufford every morning we'd go out and pt we had to you know run, you know warren officer farmer had us run in the hills and he always got cramped so he would be like chris you got mine all the mine all would help take away his cramps when we ran those hills in okinawa <laughs> but we would be like popping the mine all right. off so he was drinking too much if he was cramping up. <laughs> Probably. But yeah, the things we did. Good good. I got time. I got one last pass out story. All Please right. do. So, oh, I'm uh, sorry. I was uh I was conducting a uh, uh, one meth change of command, right? Mm -hmm. uh, not, no, I'm sorry, not uh, not change of relief and appointment. One meth relief and appointment. Um Sergeant Major starts talking and he starts like naming each battalion sergeant major and talking about them as he's going down the the, mm. the map formation right so we're on page field at, at pendleton right the band is all the way over next to the burn mm -hmm. so sergeant major is like calling out each battalion this guy he and i served back we were half together when we were sergeants and you know i met his uncle blah 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 10 minutes later second battalion blah 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 you know here like whatever like oh my god and then we hear the corpsman bring a Marine because they were triaging the pass outs right behind us in the parking lot because we were so close to the back corner of the parking lot or the, the, the parade field. It was the parking lot of the gym behind us. Right. Mm -hmm. So they're bringing Marines to triage you know, the, the passing out Marines right behind us. Of course, they're behind us. We can't see. Um, but they, they bring this Marine back and uh, you hear, hey, you good? You good? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, Marine, where's your rifle at? Uh I don't, I don't know, Marine. I, I, I don't know, Staff Sergeant. I, I passed out. What, what do you mean you don't know where your rifle's at? I, 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 don't, I don't know, Staff Sergeant. I passed out. And he goes, fuck, you're supposed to be making how, well, how come you get corpsman? How come you didn't get this rifle? Uh, seriously? And then they, you hear another corpsman bring back another Marine, you know? And, hey, you good? You good? You need some water? Yeah. Hey, Marine, where's your rifle at? You know, and we're here. We can't see any of this. We just hear it going on behind us. I, I, I don't know, Staff Sergeant. I passed out. Jesus Christ, who the fuck has got all the rifles around here, you know? <laughs> for half an hour this went on where's your fucking rifle at i guess you don't have your rifle either i don't know i'm sorry you passed out <laughs> i mean it was for oh. half an hour jesus christ nobody's got fucking rifles around here i hope we don't go to war because nobody's gonna have their rifles <laughs> <laughs> That's stupid. Comedy show, right? <laughs> like, oh my god uh, and then by you're that just time, hearing everything was, so Sergeant Major is like, oh, yeah, the headquarters battalion, that Sergeant Major over there. And I'm like, oh, just shut up, dude. <laughs> <Half the battalion laughs> mm. All your battalions are falling out. <laughs> and y'all are trying not to laugh, right? Oh, no, no. We weren't trying. Everybody gave up. <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was probably more pissed off than anything. 
I'm standing in front of the band and all yeah. the figure behind me is <laughs> <laughs> that's good stuff. Yeah. Comedy show. <sighs> all right. Well, hey, thank y'all for joining me this evening. We're gonna have wrap it up. I think we've been going for hot for a hot minute. Uh, but thanks for thanks for joining me. Um, let's see. Uh, for anybody out there, if you're having issues and you need some help and you're thinking about hurting yourself or something like that, you can always dial 988 and press, press option one. There'll be somebody on there that will help you out and put you in contact with who you need to be in contact with. You can also text at 838-255. Uh, again, that's 838-255. You can text in whatever you need to. Um, there'll be somebody that'll get back in touch with you and be able to push you where you needed to go. And uh, if you want to chat online, you can always go to veteranscrisisline.net. That's veteranscrisisline.net. And then click on the chat icon. You can sit there. You can chat. All of those options are anonymous. And you can actually call in. It's, it's for the veterans and also their veteran families. So that's for both options that, uh, for that. So keep that in mind as you're moving forward. And uh, if you need anything, I, I, I reach out to me. I, I, you know, the lost art with Andrew Cox, uh, gmail.com. I'll do everything in my power to help. Uh, but you matter. You matter to me. You matter to my crew. And you matter to all the other veterans. So uh, one veteran life loss is one too many. So with that, uh, thank you to my podcast crew. Thanks for joining me. Um, and to everybody, stay motivated, change your socks. <laughs> <laughs>